Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, it's Sean, and you're still listening to the Three Month Vacation. Have you accidentally found money in your jeans? When I was growing up, I almost exclusively wore jeans. Except I'd wear one pair, then I'd pull out the other, and soon I'd have an assortment of jeans hanging in hooks behind the door. A pair of jeans might have sat there for a week or a few months before it was washed. Right before they went for a wash, I'd dig through the pockets and I'd empty them. And now and then I'd find money. And I'd make a big announcement. I found money in my jeans, I'd say excitedly, and my mother thought I was daft. That's your own money and your own jeans, she'd say. You didn't find anything. You had it all along. Yet to me, the accidental discovery was real and it was exciting. It was money that I didn't think I had and I was going to put it to good use. A similar kind of philosophy needs to be implemented when it comes to research for your articles. Instead of driving yourself crazy trying to find research, how about accidentally finding the research and putting it to good use? Right before we dig into this little kazana, which is a treasure of unexpectedly finding research, let's find out why we go about it the opposite way. Why do we take so much trouble to look for that research Why does it slow us down so much? This podcast episode is not split up into three parts like always. Instead, it's just tackling one concept of why this research slows us down. And the core of it is based on how we write articles. So there are two broad types of articles when it comes to research. There's the research-based article, which is written by journalists, which is to say that a journalist will spend days, weeks, months, or even years interviewing, digging up facts, digging up counterfacts. And that kind of article is something that you would find in the New Yorker magazine. It lives not solely by its writing, but by its very pedantic research and lots of detail. The goal isn't to change your life necessarily, but it is to give you facts and analysis that you may not have understood. But even business articles require research. Take the case study of Barbie, for example. Do you know that Mattel, which makes Barbie, has been struggling to sell Barbie in the last few years? Modern mothers don't like the concept of a skinny woman as their kid's role model. Mothers walked past Barbie despite all the advertising. Well, there you go. That's a story. It's a business story. It's something that you found in your research. And as you dig into that story, you find that Bobby has made a comeback. And the comeback is based on their advertising campaign. There are facts, there are figures, there's strategy. And all of that is pure and unadulterated research. You and I want to know how the story unfolded. And there is a solid concept in this research, which is how to create a movement and how to create that movement when your brand is failing. When you run into that kind of research, you have to thank your lucky stars. You can then write an article that makes readers love your work. But in most cases, none of us has that time for research. As I write this piece, I could spend several hours just searching for the articles that show you that research matters, or I can have counterfacts that demonstrate that it doesn't matter. But that's not usually the goal of the business writer. That's the task of the journalist. My real goal is to get you from A to B. If I can give you some case studies and data, that's great. But my primary goal is to get you to your destination and to get you to a result. Which brings us to the second kind of writer, namely you and me. We 
we too must research because it helps bolster our articles. It makes them more attractive. Facts and case studies, they're clearly compelling. And let's not forget the first 50 words of an article. Having that story unfold in a way that holds the reader's attention is an incredible asset to have. If we are to do this kind of research, we need to work with our low energy zones. So maybe you're at the cafe, not doing much, and you're reading a book or you're on the bus listening to a podcast. And on that podcast, someone talks about the Barbie movement. As a teenage fashion model. And at the time, you realize that the information is valuable as a case study. And it possibly has data that makes your article shine. This is the way that you and I have to do research almost accidentally. We have to stumble on something, take that data, and then create the article around what we have found. Or if it's not possible to use that material right away, then we store it away, and then we can use it sooner than later. But sooner is where you want to go. I ran into this Barbie movement story about a year, maybe two years ago. I have stored it away, but I only know a few of the details. I knew a lot more when I first started to read it, which means now when I go back to that story, I have to track it down, I have to go over the information once more. It's so much more work. It takes so much more time, and this is often time that you and I don't have, which is why we need to find the story, we need to find that case study, and work with it as soon as we can. Most of us work the other way around. We try to find the research, but first we have the idea. So we're going about it a bit lopsided. We have the idea, we go looking for the research, and it's very hard to find things that way. It's just so time consuming. Instead, stumble on the information, stumble on the research, stumble on the data, and put your article together around it. At this point, there's also the temptation for adding even more research. For instance, when I'm talking about movements like Barbie, there is also a movement by Casper Mattress. Should I add that information? There is that tendency to want to add that information. But notice, as you're listening to this piece, you're still interested in the Barbie story. Bringing in Casper or TikTok case studies doesn't matter as much as you think. Every additional piece of research, every additional case study has to be crafted, has to be put together, and it's not really helping your writing. It's not helping you finish that writing, get it to the reader, and get them to do something. Because the reader is there to be educated, to be entertained, but really the goal, at least in business reading, is to move ahead. So when you're listening to this piece, my goal is to make sure that you don't waste so much time in research. It's to avoid that time-sucking research, to move you along, to get more pieces done, to gain more confidence, to start writing faster and eventually better. As a business writer, my goals are vastly different from the journalist. Yet most of the material that we've read over the years, whether in a book or through reporting, has been the journalistic kind of article. It is baked solid with details and research. The journalist is trained to go into that nitty-gritty, to find how the flood has impacted an individual, or how a new business policy has caused a few people to get inordinately rich. Those details are pretty standard fare for a journalist. They too, the journalists, they too are defiantly aiming for change. But it's a different kind of change. It's slower moving. It requires a lot of digging. We, on the other hand, need to get to the client and move them to the next stage. If we have the research, that's well and good. We find the research, we write the article, and we're on our way. And just for one second, let's go down a little diversion. If you look at all of the psychotactics articles, or most of them, and there are, I think, over a thousand, there are at least 250 in the podcast list. And what you'll notice very quickly is that 
there aren't that many case studies. There isn't that much research. A lot of it is based on our personal experience and trying to get the client to a result. Often just your own experience makes such a difference. And this applies even if you're just starting out. But what if you're not so confident about your knowledge? It's possible that you're just at a beginner stage. All of us were at a beginner stage. Maybe you don't have the backing of experience. Or maybe you have a bit of experience, but you're not that confident to put it out there. In which case, go ahead and use the research, but start moving towards the accidental research. Instead of wasting time digging up stuff that bolster the article, go the other way around. Find the information as you read, find it as you listen, and find it as you watch something. I'm obsessive with storing away details and then using them immediately in my work, whether it's an article or a course or a book. Except for that Barbie story. I read it so long ago. It's at the back of my head. I should be using it. But, you know, now it's going to take some work to hunt it down. Which brings us to the end of this podcast in which we looked at accidental research. Let's just summarize what we've learned. Journalism calls for research. It's not as vital for us as business writers. Our goal is primarily to get the client from A to B. Also, if we have a great story or research, that's great. But research needs to be done accidentally and then be used in your piece. And it needs to be used quickly while it's still hot and relevant in your brain. Otherwise, again, we're wasting time. We're searching for it. We're trying to recall what the important facts were, the things that really interested us in that story. So there's a lot of that time wastage if you don't use it right away. And when I say right away, I probably mean a week from now, ideally a day from now, but a week or two weeks from now, it's okay. There's also this temptation to use multiple levels of research on many stories. You have a Barbie story, that's good enough, but now you want to use a Casper mattress story. And you're just doubling your work and trebling your work, and you're just getting more and more tired. And writing becomes this frustrating experience because there is so much of stuff to be understood and implemented and put into that article. So don't make it more complicated for yourself. One piece of research is usually good enough. And you might not feel like it, but trust yourself in your own experiences. A lot of our articles, the majority, nine-tenths or more than nine-tenths of the article, has almost no research in it. That's over 900, 950 articles have no research in it. They do have stories. They do have case studies. All of it most of it was done accidentally and then added in later. So you may be at the level where you don't have the expertise, you don't have the confidence to present that information. It's fine, go ahead and do the research. Just remember, we wanna do it accidentally. Most importantly, Let's not forget the purpose of your article. It is to get the client from A to B. My job here with this podcast episode was to make sure that you stop doing hours of research. And if you continue to do hours of research and you don't do accidental research, then my job is not done. But if you start to look at accidental research, accidental stories that you run into, stuff that you read, listen to, then my job is done. And at least to me, that's the goal of the business writer. That's the goal of us people who have to do so many things like podcasts and videos and writing and running the business and doing all of these things. We're not doing one thing, which is just going out there and digging for journalistic facts and details. We have so many things to do. Let's not make our lives more complicated than it already is. Go out there. Find the stories and then build your article around the research that you already have. It's 6 a.m. in the morning. New Zealand is about to go from level four lockdown to level three in a couple of days. 
That's the status from New Zealand. Let's find out what's also happening in the other land, which is psychotactics land. If you've ever wondered, can I draw? Is it true that that talent has to be inborn? Can I draw cartoons? Well, this is the chance to prove that you can draw and you can draw exceedingly well. That's what the cartooning course was all about. I didn't want to start the cartooning course. A client, Joe, came in and he said, you know, I've tried all the books out there, I've bought a lot of courses, and I'm no good at drawing cartoons. And I still fobbed him off, but he convinced me. And that's how we started the cartooning course. It wasn't like something that we wanted to do. It wasn't something that was part of our agenda. But over the years, and this is going back to 2010, so many people have become cartoonists. And it's fascinating to see something that you didn't expect to do, totally accidental, that turned out to be so empowering for so many people. Because once they can draw cartoons, they think, well, what else can I do? Can I write? Can I dance? Can I cook? And there is a system. They understand that there is a system, there is a teacher, there is a group. And Allison, who's been conducting this course for almost five or six years now, she is an outstanding teacher. She's just so kind and helpful and she's there all the time. So if you think, well, this is my year, this is the time when I have the time, well, not loads of time, but a little more time, and I'm going to use my limited resources, my limited amount of money to improve that part, that skill that I've always wanted to somehow fix. Well, that's what the cartooning course is all about. So if you go to psychotactics.com slash Da Vinci, that's D-A-V-I-N-C-I, then you can get on the waiting list and when the seats are available, you will be told, hey, here it is, go for it. Now, 5000 BC members get first preference, they always do, and then we go to the waiting list. So being on the waiting list is crucial. So go to psychotactics.com slash Da Vinci. If on the other hand, you just want to do some business stuff and you don't want to go through an entire course, there are tiny products. So you can go to psychotactics.com slash tiny. That's easy, T-I-N-Y. And join us in 5000 BC. The sales page doesn't adequately describe the warmth and the comfort that you feel within 5000 BC, where you can ask questions and get answers. In fact, you know, this podcast, this was a single question and an ongoing series of questions about article writing. So it goes on and on and on. And I think that discussion, it empowers you, it saves your time, and it makes you a better writer, a better business person, which is really the goal. The goal isn't just to get more information but to get results, to go forward and specifically apply those results. And we do that by helping you remove those barriers. So come join us in 5000 BC and we'll see you there. I'll say bye for now. Bye bye. Still listening? You know, the house that we live in right now was also a result of accidental research. Ever since we moved to New Zealand, we'd wake up in the morning and go for a walk. And we were walking past this house, which was not on our usual route, but slightly off. And I looked at it and I liked the blue color on the house. And I said to Renuka, that house has been recently painted and it looks like it's going to be up for sale. Now, as you do with most house hunting, you already start doing some sort of research and we wanted one house for an office and one house to live in. So we'd been looking for houses through the traditional medium, going with real estate agents, looking through online stuff, and we didn't find anything. And then suddenly on the walk, we see this, and now we live here. There you go, accidental research. Sometimes, many times, it's the best way to go. That's me saying bye from this house of accidental research. I'll see you in 5000 BC. Bye-bye.